Well, I think that each side had key agenda points, and in many cases they were different. In some cases they converged, but I think in a number of cases they were different. I think that from the perspective of General Munir, indeed the issue of uh, terrorism well, it would be a would be a top priority for him. And I, I know that this has been discussed in many of his meetings, and his meetings to come it will be discussed as well. Um, I think that uh, he would want to draw on the fact that both the U.S. and Pakistan uh, have concerns about terrorism risks emanating from from Afghanistan. And uh, you know, he, he knows that there is a legacy of counterterrorism cooperation between the two countries. Uh, there hasn't been much of it over the last few years, but if you go back to the immediate post 9-11 era, where the two countries did a lot of cooperation to go after Al Qaeda leaders and of course as well, uh, TTP. Um, I do think that the challenge would certainly be finding common ground though, because even though they both have concerns about terrorism emanating from Afghanistan, they have um, different ideas about which threats are the most serious. For Pakistan, it's TTP. For the U.S., it's actually ISK, Islamic State Khorasan. But indeed, counterterrorism discussions, I'm sure, would be a, a key agenda point um, for both sides, for the Pakistanis and for the Americans. Um, I imagine that uh, General Munir also would want to speak about Kashmir. I mean, this is always something that uh, senior Pakistani officials want to bring up with their not only U.S. counterparts, but counterparts around the world, in particular with the recent uh, decision by the Indian Supreme Court to uphold the, uh, the repeal of Article 370. This is something that he'll want to discuss, and I think more broadly, India, quite confident, and General Munir would want to speak about you know, the, the situation with the accusations against India for attempting um, an assassination nation in the U.S., that's something that I imagine he will use as a hook to bring uh, the conversation around to this idea about whether the U.S. needs to rethink its relationship with India, try to press India to do certain things. That's not something that the U.S. side would want to talk about that much, in my view. Uh, I think that the U.S. is quite comfortable with its relationship with India, despite everything else happening. Beyond that, um, the issue of Afghan refugees. I think this is probably, from a tactical level, the most important high-priority agenda point from the U.S. side. And I'm talking here, of course, about the decision by Pakistan last month to um, expel all undocumented immigrants, which includes thousands of Afghan refugees, thousands of which came to the uh, Pakistan after the Taliban takeover. The reason why this is concerning for the U.S. is that you have many Afghan refugees in Pakistan who have been waiting for special immigration visas to allow them to come to the U.S. These are those Afghans that worked with the U.S. military uh, in the past. And the U.S. does not want these Afghans um, to be sent back to Afghanistan where they would face uh, threats to their lives. So I really think that that is a critical issue from the U.S. side. Beyond that, and I'll, and I'll end here, I think that the geopolitical picture is something that would be discussed on both sides. Um, you know, at the end of the day, the people that Munir has been meeting with, right, the NSC, the Department of Defense, uh, the State Department, and CENTCOM presumably is going to happen uh, as well. The the key issues on the minds of those U.S. leaders are the war in Gaza, the war in the Ukraine. These are not conflicts that directly involve Pakistan, of course, but I think that when it comes to the, the Mideast war, the U.S. knows that Pakistan and Munir specifically have close ties to key Arab uh, states, Gulf states like the Saudis, the UAE, Qatar, that are such important diplomatic players in the wartime diplomacy that's that's playing out now. So I imagine that the U.S. would want to talk to him about uh, that dynamic. And the war, in, as for the war in Ukraine, well, I mean, we've had multiple reports for so long that Pakistan is providing uh, arms to Ukraine. Islamabad rejects these reports, but there's good reason to think it's happening. And if that's the case, I imagine the U.S. would definitely want to discuss the war in Ukraine with uh, with General Munir as well. So bottom line, a lot of issues on the table. Some of them would involve agreement. Some of them would involve not a disagreement. Some issues one side wouldn't want to talk about, the other would. But a lot of issues on the table, which I think speaks to the fact that this this has been and will continue to be a substantive um, exchange and a, and, a, and a substantive trip by the Army Chief to the U.S. Well, I think that, um, you know, there is an opportunity. And the fact that you have General Munir spending a number of days in the U.S., I think that provides opportunities for a reset of the relationship just because he is, at the end of the day, the most powerful influential leader in Pakistan and you know we all know that the army chief exerts significant levels of influence over decisions involving policy toward the US and foreign policy on the whole and so he's going to be meeting with so many of the key decision makers in the US 
So I think that there is an opportunity to think about, to use this uh, th this visit to, to reset the relationship. But I do think that we should be skeptical about the idea of the two sides crafting a new long-term partnership. One of the challenges for this relationship since U.S. forces left Afghanistan has been to develop new anchors, new bases of cooperation for the two sides. Um, and that's the, the reason why they've struggled on that front is that uh, it, quite frankly, has not been a top priority relationship for the U.S. It simply is focused on other things. And there's also been a disconnect, as there often are in this relationship. The U.S., interestingly, as, my, as I understand it, wants to refashion the relationship, move it away from Afghanistan and security-focused issues, and more toward things like commercial relations, trade, investment, climate change. That's what the U.S. wants to focus on. But on the Pakistani side, I think that there's a desire to do that. But the immediate term priority from Pakistan's side is to focus on uh, bringing back security cooperation, um, forging a new counterterrorism uh, partnership and alliance. And I just don't think the U.S. has any interest in that or not much into interest in that, quite frankly. It wants to focus on the economic side. But the problem with the U.S. refashioning the, the relationship around trade and investment is that with the economy so bad, in Pakistan, that makes it unrealistic for the U.S. to work with Pakistan on long-term uh, economic cooperation. And I will say that one of the things the relationship has going for it is that there is actually a very uh, deep legacy of strong officer-to-officer -officer cooperation within the two militaries. That's because there's a long legacy of military and education programs for the two militaries. Many years, Pakistani military officers have spent time at U.S. military academies. And until relatively recently, you had many American military officers spending time at Pakistani military academies. So there's a lot of goodwill between officers on both sides and between the two institutions, even though, as you know, military to military relations have been a big source of tensions over the years as well. But I think the fact that you have that interest, that institutional interest within both militaries to keep the relationship going, that's, that's, that, that is important. And I think that means that at the least, you'll continue to have these these exchanges, you'll continue to have, um, you know, Pakistani military officers engaging with with their American counterparts. That'll happen. But in terms of a long term partnership, I really do think that there is just going to be a lot of limitations for the, you know, the, the disconnects that I mentioned and also geopolitical realities. Uh, I think that America's relationship with India, which I think is not going to um, to to be reined in or, or weakened anytime soon, despite recent challenges that poses obstacles for U.S. Pakistan relations. The China factor, not as much. I will say this, and this perhaps bodes well for, for U.S.-Pakistan relations. I'm hearing uh, messaging from Islamabad, including from, from the military, more and more suggesting a desire to balance relations with the U.S. and China, and a desire not for the U.S. not to think that Pakistan is in China's camp. That, that I think, would be a good thing for, for U.S.-Pakistan uh, relations. But at the end of the day, China and Pakistan continue to have a deep alliance, and that in of itself poses challenges for long-term U.S.-Pakistan partnership, just because you know America's long-term uh, top priority foreign policy issue will be competition with China. How far can you go with Pakistan when Pakistan has this deep relationship with your top uh, strategic competitor? Well, right, yeah, that picture certainly made the rounds on social media, and I'm, uh, I keep the first thing I thought of when I saw that was, well, this is going to this is going to be a this is a new meme waiting to happen. Um, look, I, I think that for me, beyond that initial thought about this is going to be a new meme, uh, what I, one thing I thought of was, well, here, this is something that we're so familiar. Th this is such a familiar sight in this relationship. Um, you know, a senior U.S. civilian official engaging directly with the top military official in Pakistan, um, even though formally Pakistan is not a, uh, it's not a military run uh, government uh, anymore. And I think that says something about uh, the dynamics of the U.S.-Pakistan relationship. In terms of what I think they were talking about, um, obviously I don't know. Um, I think that the, the meeting that Blinken would have had with Munir, I'm sure would have covered many of the issues that, that we discussed earlier. Uh, the Afghan refugee issue, counterterrorism cooperation, prospects for longer term trade and investment uh, cooperation, Afghanistan more broadly, 
climate change cooperation. I mean, keep in mind that the U- the State Department at this at this moment in time is really driving the U.S. Pakistan relationship. Much of the forward movement in the relationship is coming from the State Department, and Blinken, of course, leading the State Department. I mean, you know, there should be plenty plenty for them to talk about. Um, contrary to some of the speculation uh, coming from many in Pakistan, I really don't think at all that the two of them would have discussed um, the domestic political situation in in Pakistan. I really don't think Blinken or, or really anyone that Munir would have met with in his formal meetings would have had an interest in discussing such issues. But yeah, there there are all kinds of things they 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 must have discussed, and you know they seem to be smiling in the picture. But when they were in their actual meeting, which wouldn't have been photographed. I imagine some you know, pretty serious issues would have been discussed as well. So it may not have been all, uh, you know, all goodwill and, and, and so on. But, um, you know, they say that a, a picture can be worth a million words, so to speak. I think that that, that picture is so emblematic of, uh, of what U.S.-Pakistan relations are all about. Uh, really quite striking. Mm-hmm.